everybody. Um, welcome to Why Asians Should Care. My name is Danae Kovac. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the deputy director at HANA Center, um, which is located in Chicago. I will pass it over to Quinn Hong to introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. My name is Quinn Hong Nguyen. Uh, Quinn Hong is my first name and name that I go by. I use she, they, D, and Jen pronouns. I'm the senior communication coordinator, I'm sorry, associate at uh, Uri Juntos. And I want to pass it over to my colleague, Eve. Um, hi, I'm Madhvi. I am a core organizer with the Migrant Solidarity Mutual Aid Network and Sanctuary DMV in the DC area. I use she, her pronoun. Um, I think we can just go into the, yeah. Mad- Madhvi, do you want to give a little bit of background on um, kind of what's been happening and where we find ourselves now? Yeah. So um, I am one of the organizers who has been involved in greeting the buses since April when they started coming to DC. So back then, Governor Abbott started busing folks from the southern border to DC and dropping them off first outside the Fox News building and then at Union Station, now at Kamala Harris's office. Uh, And then soon, a few months later, he then started busing folks to New York and then Chicago. Since then, we have gotten over 6,300 people, um, and we have gotten close to 200 buses of people just from Texas. And then in May, Governor Ducey of Arizona started busing people from Arizona to D.C. as well. And we've probably gotten a a bit over 2,000 people from there, too. About 10 to 15 percent of the people choose to stay in DC and the rest of them have onward destinations. Either they have an they have community in another city or they just have heard on, of another city and want to go on to there. So there is a two part there's two parts in supporting these folks. One is to help them get where they're going and the other is to help folks resettle in the area. Yeah I had heard so we're in Chicago and I had heard that both New York have each received about seven to 8,000 people. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, buses have been arriving in Chicago um, since the end of August. So for about five to six weeks. Um, and we've received about 2,000 people so far. Sounds like kind of a similar situation. There's no communication happening. Buses are showing up every day. Um, you know, it's a bit of a scramble to kind of know how to respond, especially initially. Um, But I think one big difference that we've seen in Chicago is that um, the majority of the people who are being bused to Chicago actually want to stay in this area, which I think is different from D.C. and New York, where, you know, we've heard and I think you were just saying a lot of people are actually leaving the metro area to go to other places. So it's been kind of interesting to see how there's both similarities and differences um, at each of the destinations. We also in Chicago, I don't know if this is true for you, Madvi, but the majority of the people who are being bused to Chicago are from Venezuela. Um, There have been migrants, I think, from a few other countries as well, but it's really predominantly Venezuelans who have been coming to Chicago. Do you know for DC if the characteristics are similar? Right now we are getting a lot of folks from Venezuela and a few other places, but primarily Venezuela. Um, but it's um, we didn't always only get folks from Venezuela. It's more in the past few months. In the beginning, we got a more wide variety of folks. We got a lot of folks from Angola and Cameroon and a few other places. But I think as there are changes at the border of the people who come in, then kind of changes down the line. But yeah, right now, a lot of folks are in Venezuela. Yeah. We've also been seeing it's a a mix of families um, with children from like infants all the way up to age 18, as well as single people, a lot of single men, um, but also like women who are pregnant since um, one woman who said she arrived has actually given birth to her child here. So she was obviously very pregnant when she arrived. Um, So it's also kind of the range of, of people that are coming in different situations. Kun Hong, is there anything else you want to add from your perspective? Um, yes, I was actually curious. Well, I actually have a question in terms of what are some things that um, people may not understand or like some of the misconceptions 
that isn't covered in media in terms of this current issue right now that y'all think is um, that we should highlight? I can start with that. So one of the things that I think a lot of the media focuses on is the concept of human trafficking and this kind of leading into the fact that people don't know where they're going. People are being shipped off from the border. And while that's true in some people's cases and definitely true in the plane that Ron DeSantis landed in Martha's Vineyard, actually most of the people we see are do want to come to D.C., because they either know that there is a it's closer to their onward destination or there are people here that will book tickets to their onward destination or that they know that there's more resources for folks to stay here than there are in some of the cities on the border that do not have housing for them and uh, so i think there there's some we have to kind of sit with this contradiction that on one hand it is a political stunt being perpetuated by governor Abbott and uh, Ducey and I guess DeSantis. But on the other hand, it is something that actually helps a lot of people and people are happy to have taken these buses. And in some way, it just kind of makes me feel that instead of pushing back on people being bused here, we should just push it back on how it's being done and have it formalized we have the resources in all these big mm-hmm. cities. We should welcome people in here. Yeah, because it makes sense, right? Um, at least when I was reading an article, it says like how many of them have no money or connections and maybe 15% of those who are arriving have a tough road with no permission to work legally and no way of paying for the soaring housing costs. And it's unfair, right? Um, so yeah, no, thank you for bringing that up. Um, do we, maybe we can talk a little bit more, um, about what are some of the things more specifically that are happening on the ground and like, are there some stories that you could share, um, or other, other things? Yeah. I mean, I can talk a little bit about what's, uh, been happening. We, we've actually also had, um, some mutual aid babies. So that's kind of nice. The, the people who came here pregnant have had kids and it's kind of building a nice family out in the community. A lot of folks who come here, as um, you mentioned, they, they don't really have much and they don't have, they come, a lot of folks come off of the buses without shoes, you know, they don't, they come off without, they don't have anything. Sometimes they have just one bag of stuff and it, it is a lot to come here with nothing and especially often get on the bus a few days after or a week after you cross the border. It is a long journey to have again. And one of the things we try to do is make sure like this long journey after a long journey ends with a welcoming face and just a welcoming community. And um, so we try to turn up with everything that we can, like shoes, clothes, food, toys for the kids and create a a safe space for folks as they come out so they can finally decompress after all this and um, think about what's next and think about where they wanna put down roots. Um, In Chicago, there's been, you know, efforts by the city and of Chicago, the state of Illinois, but then also a lot of community-based organizations like Hana Center um, who are in rooted in immigrant communities and sounds like similar Monfi, to what you're doing, you know, who are coming out to like welcome people, you know, making sure that there's uh, people who speak Spanish, um, you know, people who are culturally competent, who can um, ensure that people are getting information in a way that they can understand. Um, and, you know, then kind of be really clear because when people arrive in Chicago, then they're again, just like being dropped off. Um, and then, you know, they're being taken by bus to like a shelter. Um, but making sure it's like really clearly explained to people, like you're not being detained, like, you know, this is like shelters and then people can, some people are being housed like in hotels and things, um, for families. And so like, just making sure that things are explained really clearly, because there is a lot of 
confusion um, and people just not knowing what's happening and then helping them, you know, connect to those resources, like super basic things, like you were saying, like, um, we're really anticipating that like winter clothes is going to be a big need in Chicago, you know, unfortunately winter is coming. Um, and so we're trying to get donations of like winter jackets and boots and like hats and gloves and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Texas is very interesting as well. Um, being in Texas, um, a lot of uh, folks are spread out everywhere and it seems like we can't seem to send all the um, resources into those particular locations. Uh, many different mayors in many different counties are trying to do their best to support many of the folks who've immigrated to the state uh, while there's still rhetor ongoing rhetoric about um, what should we do, right? And some of them are rooted in a lot of um, system of oppression and it doesn't really help with a lot of um, our folks' mental health. Um, and trying to get those information uh, translated into their um, native tongue is also really difficult. And so I know many of our folks are constantly asking, well, what's going to happen next and understand mm -hmm. the system that's going to uh, happen. And so there is that um, immigration related fears. Um, yeah, and that's what we, uh, Uri Juntos in Houston, Texas is trying to do. Um, so another question I have is, what is your understanding of why this is happening? And what is the biggest takeaway for people to know? It's, I mean, it's happening because we have a broken immigration system that doesn't work for the people who are most vulnerable and who need it to work. And it just feels like everything else is ripple effects from that. And then there's the even more zoomed out version of like, what is the US doing to the rest of the world that causes people to migrate? Like, for example, the reason yeah. we're seeing primarily Venezuelans in coming on the buses is because they are being paroled and in, um, into the country and given the opportunity to apply for asylum. Whereas let's say Haitians will get expelled at the border under Title 42, um, which is the basically says that you can expel people because we're in a health emergency, despite Biden saying that COVID is over. Um, so those kind of things, our immigration system also is heavily dependent on America's imperial interests in different regions in the world. And rather than actually be about um, people migrating and actual credible fear and supporting people, it is about who we like who we think is bad in the world and we want to destabilize their their country so these are the folks that qualify as asylum seekers and then if this country is like not some like this country is capitalist or something then their their people cannot possibly be asylum seekers it's messy like most u.s foreign policy <laughs> yeah i was gonna definitely say that kind of global political aspect is a big part of it, especially when we think about who's coming and in this situation. And like you were saying, you know, the way that migrants from other countries have been treated has been very different, especially most recently, you know, with like Afghans um, or Ukrainians coming. Um, and, you know, all of the support that they received was good. And nobody's saying that that should be like taken away but also all of these other migrants should also be able to have access to those things, right? Like being able to legally work, having access to housing, being able to access all these public benefits um, and not, you know, like you were saying, it being influenced by like the political stance that the U.S. is taking or like racism or like how we think about, you know, in, you know, black and brown immigrants and things like that. Um, that's also a, a huge factor in Com compiled then with like once people get here and the immigration system is super broken and not working and it's both really confusing and convoluted and like you know we see things like everybody has been released with fake addresses on their paperwork because you know ICE put down fake addresses just so they can be released and then bust out of the state um, which is also really confusing for people because they're like we have no idea what this address is 
Um, you know, and now they're in a situation where they're trying to find a permanent address um, and find housing, which is a big challenge. Yeah. What, um, what is y'all's understanding of the, like the media coverage and how we get that source of information? Like, what's your perspective on how we could do better in terms of covering uh, this particular topic as well as understanding it in a way that um, maybe our grandparents or parents understand in layman terms? Um, because I know that there's so much information that it can be overwhelming. Um, but what do you think that we could do better in terms of coverage? Mm, that's a good question. I feel like a lot of media and not just this, but you also see it here is about shock value and like, especially more recently, it's like, it's like clickbait, right? It's like how many view, what's the most shocking thing that can be said to get somebody to click on an article to like read it. And I think that there's kind of like this, also this like continual cycle of news. So it's like, it's in the news for a second and then it's gone, right? It's just whatever the next thing is. So like you see that even in Chicago, it's like, you know, the first week, um, right before Labor Day weekend, when those first buses were coming, there was lots of news coverage about it. But buses are still arriving every single day in Chicago and people have kind of stopped talking about it. You know, even like when I talk to people you know, we're still talking about it because at Hana Center, we're going and meeting with these families every day, right, to provide them case management and resources and try to get them connected to things. Um, so I think there's always that challenge in the media of how do you keep people's attention on things and how do you also help people um care about, I mean, that's the whole point of the series, right? Why Asians should care, like really care about it and not just like oh, this is shocking, um, but like see how, yes, this is a shocking thing, but it's connected to all of these other systems of oppression and injustice that we need to be fighting against like day in and day out, even when it's not in the news. So I don't know that that answers your question, um, but I would you know, love to hear what either of you think. I think um, I, I really agree with the shock value part. What I want to know is the the folks on, who are taking this journey story, and not in like a like a what is this, tragedy porn kind mm -hmm. of way. I didn't know how to say that in a different way, um, but like in a what do they need from the system that they are not receiving? And it's just it's those kind of things, and so. This anti-immigrant sentiment that exists is something we really need to examine and put out into the light. Like, in we should be investing more resources in everybody. Like, it's not um, we want people to have more than others. We just want everyone to have everything equally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what? Um, hopefully, moving from equality to equity and then to mostly liberation. So that way one day there's no barriers or challenges that anyone has to go through in order for folks to just be in the space. Mm -hmm. um, so another question that uh, came to mind is what do you think, what, sorry, uh, another question that came to mind is why do you think Asians should care? What are the intersections to other issues in our communities? And then the, ways to get involved and get close. I mean, I think that, you know, as Asians and as Asian Americans, like we also live in a country under white supremacy, right? And are also targets and um, face, you know, stigma, xenophobia, like being seen as foreigners, not welcome here, as taking things that quote unquote, belong to other people. Um, and it's important to be in solidarity with people, right? And to stand up when we see these injustices, not only in our own community, um, but because we're all, you know, immigrants together and, and um, 
yeah, it's not, it's not just about your personal experience, but it's about being part of this larger community that we're all fighting for justice together. Um, so that like you were saying, Quinn Hong, like we can have, you know, that liberation for all. I mean, I think that was perfect. So I'm not gonna have to <laughs> liberation for all for sure. Yeah. Um, so additionally, um, do you have any other shameless plugs on ways folks can uh, support, do, et cetera, et cetera, fun things or me, I guess? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it is, there are some very tangible ways to get involved, right? And to support, which I think is always great. And we need to continue to bring more people in. It's not important. Like you can't only just care in your heart, right? Like live that out. Um, so, you know, at HANA Center, we are collecting donations, um, both like people can donate money so that we can go buy specific things that families need. We're working with a specific group of families that um, are trying to resettle here, um, whether that's, you know, like clothes or medicine or like toys or whatever. Um, so you can donate money. You can also donate um, specific items that are needed. We're putting together a list and we'll be sharing that out. Um, you can volunteer. There's ways to volunteer to, you know, help people. We need to help people like with transportation or like, you know, we're going to be teaching ESL or um, stuff like that. So if anybody is in the Chicago area and interested in volunteering, please contact HANA Center. Um, we would love to talk with you more, especially if you're Spanish speaking. So lots of ways to get involved. Um, if you're in the DMV area, we have, um, we're always looking for volunteers to greet buses and also for our long-term resettlement effort. We have hundreds of people that we support. Um, and so we always need help with that. And you could volunteer your time. You could put someone up in your house. You could drive people around. There are remote support options. Like there's a ton. Then we, are, we always need money, you know, with any <laughs> effort and supplies so we have a list of all the stuff that we need or you can buy a t-shirt you know support but you know just as a mutual aid group also just like look for mutual aid groups in your community get involved donate to them like this is a this is a what is it a flash in the pan moment i think that's mm. the phrase you know this is a this is a, a energizing mobilizing moment but um, there are these issues and people who need support and who are being uh, left in the cracks and and just ignored by the systems in wherever you live. And there are always folks trying to support with that and be in community. So find them, get involved. Yeah. Um, if you're in Houston, Texas, um, I want to say like retweeting all of my colleagues on what they said. Um, donating funds um, at Uri Juntos, uh, Houston, Texas. Um, and it could either be funds, supplies, staying informed, right? And like trying to be able to um, circulate information that actually um, makes sense and is not perpetuating um, all these different rhetorics, right? And then volunteering your time and skill to support grassroots projects and organizations. Um, no skill is uh, not uh, valuable. At least we value all different types of skills. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much, Madvi and Kun Hong, for joining um, today. This conversation has been really great to have with both of you. Um, and to all of our viewers, thank you so much for joining us to um, listen to this conversation. Uh, please remember to subscribe to Nakasek's YouTube channel, and we will see you next time. Bye.